A few days ago, my tech startup Velocity released the first version of our mobile app, which is now available on iOS and Android. If you haven't already downloaded it, you can do that from the link in the description and use the invite code tech with Tim. We're only going to be letting on a few hundred more people. So if you want a chance to view the app before it gets to the next state and kind of when we're in our early release, let's call it that, then make sure you do that now. Regardless, after announcing this on my YouTube channel, we got a ton of feedback on the app. We gained our first 1,000 users and a bit more. And now, after being a few days past the release, I wanted to share with you kind of some of the lessons that we've learned, challenges that we've ran into, problems that occurred, and just tell you a bit about how the release went and kind of keep you guys updated. This is something I want to continue to do on this channel, talk to you guys about how the startup is going, things that I've learned from a technical perspective, also from a user perspective, marketing, business, etc. Hopefully you guys are looking forward to that. With that said, let's get into the video. So in case any of you didn't see my original video, that goes through the full walkthrough and demo of the app. So feel free to check that out. I'll throw it on the screen. But now let me explain to you kind of what happened on release day. So I posted a video at about noon my time. Now, as soon as I posted the video, it did pretty well immediately. And within the first two hours, we had a few hundred new users on our app. Now we got a ton of feedback during that time and we had a ton of issues and bugs that occurred. Now, one of the most critical issues that occurred was there was an issue with our invite code system. Now, this was an issue I had never seen before, even when I tested with about a hundred other people on different iOS and Android devices. But I think what happened was we had a bunch of people join at once, which we have never had. And it caused a little bit of latency on our back end, which essentially resulted in people kind of being stuck on the invite code redemption page. So what they would do is redeem their invite code. The app would tell them, yes, the invite code's all good, but it wouldn't move them forward in the onboarding process. And that's because of, again, a bit of latency between when we were assigning kind of a role that allowed the user in an app and when the app was checking if they had that role. So it was checking before that role was assigned. So what I needed to do was very quickly go on our back end, uh, do a little bit of a fix and essentially make it so the role was assigned earlier in the process so that they would then be able to join the app. So maybe that makes a bit of sense, but we lost probably about 100 users in the first few hours of my video being released because we had this bug that I couldn't fix or I didn't know about. Fortunately, the bug was kind of self-correcting. If you were to close the app and reopen it, you were fine. You would have got through. But again, something popped up completely unexpected and right at the beginning of our kind of user registration process, which is the worst possible time for it to occur. So I guess the lesson here is that anything that can go wrong is going to go wrong. You kind of need to be prepared for that. Uh, and I won't lie to you, you know, it was a bit stressful for me in those few hours, kind of running around panicking, making a bunch of YouTube comments uh, and trying to figure out what this issue was. So anyways, that's kind of what happened at the beginning of the release. And then as we continued throughout the day, I was kind of monitoring all of the analytics, looking at all of our different dashboards and overall everything was going okay. Obviously there was some bugs, there was some minor issues, some problems with some games. There was a few people crashing in the app, but this wasn't anything unexpected. Whenever you have a brand new app that you're rolling out to a bunch of people around the world on hundreds of different devices, you're gonna run into stuff like this that you just can't find in internal testing. So I wasn't too stressed about that. And as I kind of went through the day, I started to realize that a lot of the weird bugs that were occurring were occurring on very, very old Android devices. So we had done a lot of testing on iOS and for the most part, iOS was completely fine. Android, however, was a little bit harder to test because there's just so many different devices and versions. And what ended up happening was a ton of you guys, I don't know why, are on like Android 4, Android 5, Android 6, which are really, really old versions of Android. And you were having a lot of issues with the app that were causing you guys to crash. So I guess kind of the lesson here was that we needed to make the minimum supported version for the app higher, which we didn't know in case until you guys started crashing with all these older versions of Android. And the only way I was able to determine that was because I added a Crashlytics, we use Firebase, so it's called Crashlytics, the package, I added like a crash monitoring software to the app that kind of gave us information about all the app devices, all of the Android versions, etc. So I was able to determine that anyone below a certain version of Android uh, was just crashing in the app because they had an outdated kind of Java SDK. That's at least what I think the problem was. So we've kind of fixed that now. But again, something that we didn't consider. I didn't think that people were going to be on an Android version from 2015 or from 2014 or on a really, really tiny Android device. And there's all kinds of weird bugs occurring there. So we kind of had to mitigate that going forward. So again, lesson here, you know, you got to really consider that almost anyone can be using your app, especially if you're going on a platform like Android. Uh, and that's something that I didn't really think. And that was kind of an oversight for me when I was doing the original development. 
So continuing here, the next thing I'll discuss is feedback. Now, obviously feedback is super important, especially when you're in kind of an early release and there's all kinds of bugs and issues that could occur, especially because you guys are technical and you can actually kind of determine if something's a bug or if it's expected behavior, just because you guys have some experience programming. So we received a ton of feedback in the app. We actually have kind of like a form you can go into on the app to submit it and through the YouTube comment section, which was extremely helpful. So this isn't something that we struggled with. It's just something I wanted to mention. We kind of thought about this beforehand and we made sure there was a way for you guys to submit us feedback directly. And we have an internal kind of admin dashboard where we can go and view all of that feedback and kind of check it off as completed, like we've handled it, we've responded to that. Now, the one thing that we kind of missed here was collecting more information about where the feedback was coming from. So this was, you know, my fault, but I forgot to collect like the device, uh, the username, like some other more important information that we'd want related to who's submitting the feedback. So we still could track it to who did it, but we had no way to communicate back with that user or to determine, you know, what device they were on, if it was Android or iOS or what version of the app they were on, because we had two versions at one point in time, etc. So that was something that we should have collected that we didn't. And now we're going to have to add into the new version. Additionally, we didn't allow users to submit like a video or a photo, which obviously would have been really helpful. So going forward, we're probably going to add that to the feedback page just to give us some more clarity as to what the issue actually is. So moving on, the next thing I'll talk about is data and analytics. Now, obviously there is analytics in the app. We know all of the page views. We have a bunch of events. I spent a lot of time building this in. However, our infrastructure on the back end for kind of viewing all of this data, analyzing it quickly is not the best and something that as a company we need to work on. So even though we did build custom kind of admin and internal dashboards like analytics dashboards, it was still difficult for us to kind of find the information that we were looking for once all of our users were on the app and generated all of this data. Uh, and it was let's say more time consuming that it had to be to kind of filter through different events, look through different data, do queries. We didn't have everything set up as robustly as we probably wanted. So that's something we learned very quickly. You know, we have all of this data. We want to start making decisions based on this, but that takes time. We don't even know necessarily how to view all of this data correctly. It's hard to really draw meaningful conclusions. Maybe we messed up an event in the app and that caused, you know, some questions on if our data was valid or not. So just something to note there, I can't really go into it too much more depth beyond that, but just the importance of analytics and being confident in the data that you have, because you can have a ton of different data, but if you're not sure where it's coming from or if you logged it correctly, then that data kind of becomes meaningless. All right, next, another lesson that we learned here was really the importance of our onboarding process. So for our app, we have kind of a multi-step onboarding process. Now, admittedly, this is not the best. It needs some work. And we kind of knew that before doing the release. But this release really solidified in our minds, you know, how important it is to kind of change the onboarding and make it a more rapid entrance to the app rather than this kind of slow, you know, multi-step thing where we're going to lose people along the way. So that's what we noticed. Not you know, crazy, but we did lose a few users through the onboarding process. And when users did get through the onboarding, they didn't necessarily know where to go in the main application. What I mean by that is we didn't have a great kind of starting point. We didn't have, you know, like a guided tutorial of the app where we walk through all of the features. And I think, and from what I saw from some of the feedback that we have, a lot of users were kind of overwhelmed by the number of buttons and pages, and they didn't know directly what to click on or kind of where to go. Now, most of you were able to figure out the app. I think some of you also watched my demo which probably helped. But going forward, we're going to need to revise that onboarding process and just make it more clear as to what the app is about, what you're supposed to do and really simplify kind of the initial phase and then let you figure out the rest of the features afterwards. So with that said, guys, I think that's going to wrap up kind of this first video, this first kind of update about the release. Nothing critically horrible went wrong. There wasn't any major mistakes. Overall, the app's working. It's scaling pretty well. It hasn't been too expensive yet on Firebase. Generally speaking, things are good. Uh, a lot of you guys have been enjoying the app. You've given some really positive feedback. With that said, of course, there's bugs. Of course, there's issues. There's stuff that needs to be fixed. There's some crashes that we need to address, and those will all get fixed in the coming weeks, months, etc. I really appreciate all of you for supporting the startup, for downloading the app from the link in the description, uh, and generally just for supporting me as I kind of go through this journey. So I want to continue to update you on what's going on, give you more information about analytics. Maybe you'll actually look at the kind of analytics dashboard in the next video. Let me know what you guys want to see and hear about the startup. And with that said, I will see you in another one.